Hey, y'all want to have some black powder fun? Come on, let's go. Hey, hey, YouTube, welcome back to Arab and Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin, but you knew that, didn't you? Today I want to share with you my friend Nadine. Nadine is my Hawken Woodsman 50 caliber muzzle loader. It is a percussion firing muzzle loader made by Traditions Firearms modeled after the Hawken Woodsman and I tell you what I love this gun I absolutely love it this is a 50 caliber and it is so fun to shoot and there's just something about that smell of gun of gun and powder it just I love it but Nadine has a 28 inch octagon barrel it's octagonal Arabin the octagon is where mixed martial arts take place get it right come on man of course you can see here is the ramrod slides right up underneath there does have adjustable sights a double trigger system so the back trigger sets the hammer the front trigger fires and then in the back you got the brass hardware brass section here opens up you can keep your patches in there nice brass hardware you got a brass on the butt nice brass handle there brass finishings it's a beautiful 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 gun like I say it's made by traditions firearms modeled after the Hawken Woodsman and uh, Hawk the Hawken brothers made muzzleloader rifles back in the 1820s up until the early 1860s this was the hunting gun of the frontiersmen and the mountain men Later, Winchester came along and kind of replaced them with the breech loaders. But before that, the Hawken brothers made the gun that everybody wanted. If you've ever seen the movie Jeremiah Johnson with Robert Redford, that's all he wanted was a Hawken 50 caliber. Oh, the damn fool! Slide it up over the saddle. But there's a lot more involved in shooting black powder, and that's what I love about it. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to load Nadine. All right. The first thing we want to do is reach into our pouch. And everything that we need is in here. And uh, the first thing we want to do is powder, okay? So I'm going to use my powder measure, which I have set at 65 grains. That's the amount of powder that I'm going to use. So now, I just empty the powder from my horn. There we go. So it levels off. And because it's marked, I know I've got 65 grains of black powder in here. So now, I put that into the barrel, give it a little tap to make sure that it all goes in. All right, so the powder is in. Now, what we need to do is get a patch and a ball. 
So again, we reach in our pouch. We grab our pre-lubricated patch. And we grab our .49 caliber ball. Now, to get it started, we'll use our starter. Give it a little thump. And then push it in like that. Now that the ball is started, we're going to take the ramrod out, put it in, and we're just going to ram the ball until we know that it's seated at the back of the barrel. Give it a few taps, take the ramrod, put it back in like that. Now the rifle is loaded and ready to shoot. I'm going to reposition the camera so that we can do that. Now that we've got Nadine, Nadine loaded and at half cock, we want to put a cap on the nipple or a primer. Some people call them primers, some people call them caps. Now we're ready to shoot. So what we're going to do is pull it back to full cock. you got a back trigger which is to set it and then the front trigger to fire. So we take aim on our target, set it with the first trigger, now we're ready to fire. Ready? Get on camera here. Yeah! Oh, I love the smell of gunpowder. Anyway, now that I've shown you how to shoot it, let's take a look at some of the implements that I carry in my possibles pouch. Stick around. I'm going to share with you now some of the implements and tools that it takes and that the mountain men would carry back in those days. But uh, let me just grab some things here and then I'll go into the pouch and show you what I've got and what's required when you're going to get into black powder uh, shooting. Of course you need something to keep your black powder in. And uh, powder horns were carried. It's a way that mountain men, frontiersmen would carry their powder. Keep it dry. Some of them just had corks on the end. Some of them had a brass release like this one does. Basically if I hold this like this, the powder's not going to come out. But if I push that button, it opens it up, and then that's when the powder will come out. So that keeps it closed, prevents moisture from getting in there. Yeah, this is just a traditional type of powder horn. Uh, they would usually put it on some type of uh, strap like this, just a leather strap or a woven strap. Sometimes they would barter with the Native Americans who would make things like this, and they would use those. Um, now, other than the gun, you would have a, mountain men would carry a possible pouch, or a shooting bag, some people called it, where they would keep all of the tools and things that they needed uh, to use their rifle. So I'm going to go through and show you some things. Now this is one thing that I I'll keep it in the shooting bag but if I know I'm going to be shooting it I'll put it around my neck and uh, on it this is just a cap loader and it's an easy way what you do is you just push up on it that pushes a cap into the top then you can put that right on the nipple of the gun, pull back, and your cap is loaded. So it's a, a cap loader, and it'll hold, I don't know, 20 or so caps, and that way it keeps you, because they're so small, it keeps you from going into a separate little tin and grabbing it with your hand. You can just have this on your neck, hook it onto the nipple, pull, and now your cap is on there. Also on this, I keep a uh, 
This is a uh, nipple wire. And basically it's a little brass piece. Again, you push up. Hopefully that's coming through. But you see how the little comes out. And that's how you clean the nipple. After you fire the gun, it's a good idea to stick this into the nipple and get out any powder, any residual stuff that might have gotten down in that nipple that would prevent the fire from the cap igniting the powder in the barrel. So those are two very important things to have. Also, um, you want to know how much powder you're putting in there. So I have a brass powder measurer and you can see if you just turn this you can raise that up and down and this one will go anywhere from zero grams up to 120. The maximum powder that they recommend for this gun are 110 grains and uh, I usually set mine at 65. I don't know if this will come through on camera, but you'll see there's numbers on there. So I set mine between 6 and 7. So I know that when I pour my powder from my horn into this measurer, I know that I'm getting a consistent 65 grains. Sometimes it'll go a little bit above, but you pull that like that and that pushes it off. And then you can just simply pour the powder into the barrel like that. But that way you can always have a consistent measure. Traditions Firearms says that for the best accuracy, you want to stay between 50 and 75 grains of gunpowder. That's why I kind of settled on 65. But if I needed more power, I could certainly go up to 80, 90, 100, 110. Other tools, uh, these, are your, these are your caps or your primers. This particular gun uh, shoots a number 11, and they're very tiny. You can see how small they are, and that just fits on top of the nipple of the gun right there like that and then when the hammer comes back now the gun is not loaded because I just fired it there's no powder there's no ball nothing in there so you'll set the first trigger you'll set the second trigger the cap goes off like that forces a spark down into this chamber where the powder is sitting in the bottom of the barrel right here and all this separating the powder next you have a pat a patch and then the ball okay so that's basically the caps or the primers depends on what you want to call them like i say i use the cci percussion caps number 11 for this gun and they fit on that nipple perfectly that's what's recommended for this gun so that's why i use it Another thing I keep in my bag is just ear protection. Oh, most of the time I forget to use it. Uh, this tool is a very important. This is a, called a nipple wrench. Over time, your nipple will wear down and it, need, it might need to be replaced. And when you're cleaning your gun thoroughly, you want to remove that nipple, clean it out, get it nice and clean and then dry before you put it back on. And this is just the tool that you use to do that. I have an old one here. You can see how it's been bent, uh, but it still works. It's just bent a little bit. So the other day I was at Sportsman's Warehouse. I picked up another one. They're only like four or five bucks. Doesn't hurt to have backup of anything, right? Then are your patches. After you put the powder in, you want to take a patch and put it on the top of the, the gun like that, of the muzzle. Then, that's where you'll place your ball, okay? Now, this is a 50 caliber, like I said. The ball 
is just a round lead ball. They used to make these. I don't. I, I want to get into that. And uh, it's something that I'm going to start doing in the future. But you can just buy these lead balls anywhere where you get your muzzle loader stuff. This is actually a .49 uh, caliber ball because your patch is the other .01, okay? That gives you together like that 50 caliber that fits into the, the muzzle. So, yeah. So you got your cap, you got your balls, you got your patches. Um, once you get that patch and that ball right there, you need what they call a starter. And if you notice this ball with the little ram, little mini ramrod on it, has this little thing right here. And you can see it's the perfect size and shape for a ball like that. So once the ball and the patch are in the tip of the gun, you just take that, give it a couple of whacks to get the ball beneath the tip of the muzzle bore. Then you'll take this, give it a few pounds until it's down, like that. And then that gets your ball about down to here. So how do you get the ball all the way to the bottom? Well, that's when you use your ramrod. So you pull your ramrod out, you push it in, and you just keep pushing down until you know the ball is at the bottom. Then what you want to do is just give it a few taps to make sure that the ball is seated good. Take your ramrod back out. I always put it back in before I fire. And now you're ready to fire. You've got the ball and you got the pat you got the powder, the patch, the ball. All you gotta do is put on the cap. You're ready to go. So most likely, back in the day, the pouches that the mountain men and frontiersmen carried their stuff in were probably made out of some type of leather. They probably made them themselves or bartered. This one that I have is just made out of a very soft leather. It's more like a, a suede, actually. But uh, on it... Up at the top, on this part of my shoulder, well, when I put the bag on, I'll show you. Sitting right here is a little patch knife. And it's called a patch knife because that's what they would use to cut their patches, uh, which is the material that they use to wad the ball in. Now, I don't cut my own patches. I could. But uh, I just buy these that are already cut and they're pre-lubricated. Yeah, this little patch knife, like I say, it just fits right in here. It's got a uh, nice little leather sheath. Kind of decorative there with some lace and beads. And I've just got it strapped on to where it hangs that way. And then also the, the little starter that I showed you. It's just got two little knots in the uh, strap so that it fits right there. And again, everything is made to be handy. Like I say, so I can just reach right here and grab that and load. And then I can just push it right back in and I'm ready to go. But this bag... I purchased this offline from, I can't remember the company. I've had it for so many years. I don't know where it came from. Inside of the bag, it's basically one big pouch. But then there is a smaller pouch right here. I don't know if you can see it. Right here. And in that pouch is where I'll keep the balls. I usually keep a, a few dozen or maybe about a dozen round balls in there. That way I can just reach into the bag and grab one. But I keep the majority of them 
in this old tobacco tin that I just painted. And uh, you can keep a lot of them in there. And uh, like I say, I want to get into making my own lead balls. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I know this video's kind of been all over the place. And it's very windy out here today. I hope that the wind isn't interfering with the sound. But if you've never tried black powder, I'm telling you, it's it's worth getting into. It's it's fun. This gun right now, uh, I think you can get this online right now for about four hundred and twenty dollars. You might be able to find it on sale cheaper than that. I I, I don't know. But uh, I've had Nadine for oh uh, probably five. I've had Nadine for about ten to twelve years, I guess. One another thing about the ramrods. This ramrod, if you unscrew the the brass tip of it, you see that little screw thing right there. If you do end up getting a ball that doesn't fire stuck in the barrel you can use this screw to screw the ball out and pull it out now this anyway I know I'm getting kind of long on this one but I wanted to share my black powder rifle with you I'm thinking about taking her hunting next week I'd love to harvest a deer with my muzzle loader that would be so cool but anyway, I appreciate all of you guys for checking in with me. Um, if you've already subscribed to my channel, thanks for returning again. If you haven't yet, I'd love to have you. Just make sure you go ahead and take a moment now to click that subscribe button. Click the bell so that you can be notified of my upcoming videos. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you really like this video... Share it with someone. Till next time, guys. Keep calm. Carry on. Keep it outdoors.